Part two, here we go. So, Watamote is the story of Tomoko Kuroki's struggle against her own mental illness. It wasn't obvious to me at first, but once I got past the laughter, the sympathetic pains, and the sore throat I got from shouting at my screen during episode eight, it dawned on me that the way in which Tomoko engages this struggle is admirable. In fact, I would go so far as to call it courageous. While her inner monologue does tend towards self-pity fairly often, in terms of her actions, she does not play a victim. She has a remarkable sense of self-efficacy, and she doesn't sit back and allow her life to be controlled by anxiety. Now, self-efficacy is a term used in psychology, which refers to a person's internal assessment of their own ability to solve problems and effect change. To put it in weeb terms, it's your estimation of and belief in your own power level. So while a person with poor self-efficacy might see the problems in their life as insurmountable, a person with high self-efficacy will see these problems as challenges to be taken on and conquered, and they will be confident in their ability to do so. And that's Tomoko, strange as it may sound. Her problem is that she has no social life. She's not popular, as both she and the show's title constantly remind us. And most of the series revolves around her planning and executing a string of idiotic and doomed schemes to solve this problem. But no matter how stupid her plans are and no matter how implausible their success, in general, she remains extremely optimistic about the outcome. Her younger brother Tomoki comments on this in the first episode, in which he is coerced by Tomoko into holding daily conversations as a way for her to improve her social skills. She explains that they have to keep doing this until she at least gets a boyfriend, and he's surprised by her unfounded optimism when she states that it'll probably only take about a month. One of my favorite moments in the show is in episode 6. So, Tomoko believes that playing dating sims every night will trick her body into thinking she's in a relationship, thereby causing an increase in her female hormones, which will supposedly make her look like this. After outlining the plan, she states with absolute certainty, this'll work. As with most of Tomoko's plans, it will of course end in her embarrassing herself and making everyone think she's even weirder than they already do. But in this moment, she's so confident in it. It's strange to think of a person with social anxiety disorder as confident, but she really believes in her ideas. And though they are horrible ideas, I like the fact that her solution to any problem is always to act rather than to dwell on her anxieties. In fact, she could stand to do a lot more thinking. She charges into battle completely unprepared with expectations that are totally delusional and it almost always ends badly. It's only later when she learns to temper her expectations and set realistic goals that she actually begins to make progress. But delusional or not, I appreciate her conviction. No matter how many times she fails and brutally humiliates herself, she continues to believe in her eventual success. I always look to the series OP as a perfect encapsulation of Tomoko's greatest qualities as a character. It's a dark and gritty animation which does a great job portraying her isolation from the rest of the world and the raging bitterness she feels because of it. But at the same time, it shows us equally well her determination to escape the shackles of anxiety and loneliness. That's it, no more. These are the opening lyrics, a declaration that Tomoko is fed up with her circumstances. If you listen to the full version of the song with all the parts that were cut out for the title sequence, you'll find these lyrics. This is a song of hope for those who feel loneliness. What can they do for the future, those who never knew this sorrow? But my favorite lyric is this. I'm on my way to finding my way. You ought to realize how admirable that is. I'm not going to go over all the lyrics I like, because that would just basically be all of them, but you can just go read them yourself. And if you've seen Watamote, but you never really paid attention to the words, you should. They added something to my appreciation of this character, and I think they might do the same for you. Anyway, though she struggles against her bindings, the OP finishes triumphantly, with Tomoko breaking her chains and inviting us to a future where everything has changed, before reminding us that it's our fault she's not popular.
not hers. This ties into a very interesting scene in episode three, where she's having an uncomfortable encounter with these two dudes while they take shelter to wait out a rainstorm. One of them remarks that she's a quiet girl. Of course, Tomoko is too paralyzed by fear to reply out loud, but in her thoughts, she argues that she's not quiet at all. She's actually cheerful and fun. And that's what the OP illustrates so well. In her perception, this shy, awkward girl is not who she is. There's an entirely different Tomoko from the one people see, an intelligent, articulate, dynamic person with a sharp tongue and even a bit of charisma. But this Tomoko exists only in the form of her internal monologue, trapped within her own mind by a prison of anxiety and unable to respond even when people do make the effort to engage her. Yet she is determined to free this person and bring her into reality no matter what it takes. Now, on multiple occasions over the course of the show, there are moments where Tomoko nearly succumbs to despair. Despondency. In episode 2, the prospect of speaking to her old middle school friend Yuchan and realizing she has nothing good to tell her about her life drives home just how depressing her situation is. In episode 6, Tomoko is eager to go see a fireworks display, only to realize that over the course of her entire first semester of high school, she hasn't met a single person who would actually want to go with her. In episode 10, she wins a giant stuffed animal at an arcade, hoping it'll cheer her up, but that hope immediately dies when it only makes her feel more lonely. Episode 12 begins with a mental montage of her comparing her old fantasies of what she thought high school would be like to the painful reality of her current life. But Tomoko has great determination. On each of these occasions, she suffers a moment of panic, sadness, or anxiety, but every time, her response to these negative emotions is to renew her commitment to her goal and then take action. As she says in the last instance, regretting the past now won't do any good. It'll just make me wanna die. I'll just do what I can right now. Even though the actions she ends up taking are usually fucking retarded, as far as I can tell, this is still the healthiest possible attitude a person can have towards adversity. And she maintains this attitude with remarkable consistency. Which brings me to what might be her most important quality of all resilience. You can have confidence in your ability to succeed and you can have all the determination in the world, but if that gets shattered by failure and you crack to pieces when shit goes wrong, you're fucked. Life at least in my experience, is a series of fuck-ups salted here and there with a few triumphs, and your ability to reach those triumphs is contingent on your ability to persevere through all your failures. You must be able to endure. And that's what Tomoko does she endures. Episode 5 is another one of my favorites of the series. Tomoko decides that in order to achieve popularity, she should change her personality entirely, and she's inspired by an anime she's watching. Or at least, I think it's an anime? Maybe it's a live-action TV show, but it just looks like an anime since Watamote is an anime, so everything looks like an anime. I, I don't know. Who gives a shit? Anyway, she's inspired by this show she's watching to play a silent deadpan character, which she believes will make her cool. However, it doesn't take long for her to be brought to the verge of tears by the realization that these types of characters only work in a show because another character actually tries to talk to them. Still, she sticks with the plan, and after school, she goes to a coffee shop in the hopes that she can act cool there. This whole scene hurts to watch. She drops a truckload of spaghetti while ordering, she ruins her coffee, but tries to drink it anyway so she doesn't look like an idiot and then tops it all off with utter humiliation by falling out of her chair, eating shit, spilling her drink all over the floor, and crying. It is both hilarious and miserable. Then of course there's this infamous incident in episode 4 where she buys a new pair of panties in the hopes that it'll make her feel attractive, loses them, and ends up mistaking them for a handkerchief and waving them around in the middle of class. I could go on. I could describe every horrible thing she goes through, but you've already seen the show, so suffice it to say, there's a lot. Almost every day of this girl's life brings with it some new catastrophe. Spilling your coffee or doing this might not seem like a big deal to normal people, but because of her mental illness, these events are emotionally devastating to Tomoko. And yet she endures. She weathers so much pain 
Granted, a lot of it is of her own making, but my point is that she can handle it. Some of these incidents are so traumatic that they lay her out for an evening, but no matter how thoroughly she humiliates herself, she's back on her feet the next day and ready to try again. She recovers very quickly, and she does not let past failures color her expectations for the future. She doesn't let social anxiety take away her willingness to try new things. She doesn't let it make her world smaller and crush her into a little box as it so often does. Like I said before, if anything, she's too optimistic, but excessive optimism is a lesser evil than excessive pessimism. Well, the former inevitably leads to disappointment, the latter leads to not trying at all and failing by default. Tomoko is not a person of integrity, but her lack of moral character does not diminish the importance of her fortitude nor the lesson we can learn from it. To sum up my feelings on all this shit, I could turn to the famous Greek thinker Plato, who once wrote, never discourage anyone who continually makes progress, no matter how slow. However, I prefer a much more eloquent quote by the British philosophical collective known as Chumbawamba. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never gonna keep me down. <laughs> I can't say it without laughing. It's so dumb. I'm a retard. Did you guys... Did you guys know that? I am... Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like some of the people who listen to this shit, like, you know, think I'm smart in some capacity. And I just, I just want you to know that that's not true. Alright, that's the end. I fucked that up. <laughs>